Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. My name is Jiyoung Park and I've been using Ubuntu for 11 years and I'm here to talk about my new favorite thing in Linux called KXEC and how to use it on Ubuntu. If you want to optimize your boot time, this is the go-to command that you would use, systemd analyze. You can find out which services are hogging up your boot time and disable it well. The problem is that even if you optimize the systemd service chain, reboots are still slow. The majority of time is spent in BIOS and Grub. Workstations and servers are much worse as those take much longer time in BIOS initialization, taking several minutes just to get to the Grub screen. Enter KExec. KExec can bypass the BIOS and Grub to make reboots much faster. Let's first look at how regular reboots work under Ubuntu. When you type reboot on the shell, it calls the systemd init service to initiate the reboot process. After systemd stops all services, it calls the reboot system call. The Linux kernel then physically resets the computer. The BIOS takes control and performs memory training and loads the UFI drivers. Grub then gets loaded, which unfortunately can waste additional time due to the Grub timeout setting. Grub loads the Linux kernel, which in turn loads initRG and systemd. Now comparing this with KExec, systemd now passes a slightly different flag to the reboot system call, which tells the Linux kernel to use KExec instead. After the Linux kernel shuts down all devices, it jumps to the newly loaded kernel, which starts the initialization process and loads systemd. Here, someone has to load the to be booted kernel to the RAM, and this is where KExec tools comes in. It is used before systemd to load a kernel and initrd to the RAM. Now that we have an idea of how KExec reboots work, we'll now learn how to use KExec on Ubuntu. First, we will need KExec tools. Second, we need to remove the final RD package. With final RD, systemd fails to find the KExec binary and performs a full reboot instead. This package is marked recommended by the MD RAID manager, so if you use RAID or Ubuntu server, chances are that you would have this installed on your system. Note that the MD RAID itself works just fine without final RD. The final piece is the custom reboot helper. This wraps KXEC tools to load the latest kernel and init RD to the RAM, and finally calls systemd to initiate KXEC. You can follow this link and save it to user local sbin with executable permission. So how effective is KXEC? I've measured the time for how long it takes for the network to get back up. KXEC only takes around 8 seconds for ping to respond back, while a full reboot takes 36 seconds. On another AMD Epic system with two NUMA nodes, we managed to reduce it from 2 minutes to 15 seconds. Note that KXEC has several limitations. First, the frame buffer provided by the UFI may not work. Because of this, the display may not receive a signal until the new kernel loads to graphics drivers. This is not really much of an issue unless you're a system developer and needs to read logs during the early boot process. Second, several imperfect BIOS may break KXEC. On Intel platforms, we didn't have any issues so far, but we had multiple issues on AMD platforms, which were fixed by a BIOS update. Third, some hardware changes may still require traditional reboots. So for example, if your SATA controller doesn't support hot plugging or has it disabled, adding a new drive may still require you to perform a normal traditional reboot instead of KXEC. With all of this in mind, it's probably a good idea to test KXEC when you have physical access or IPMI before putting KXEC into production. I'll end the presentation with some extra tips and tricks. If you are a kernel developer, you might find Qubit to be useful as well for reducing downtime during development. I actively use Qubit during development as you can basically recover from any sort of fatal kernel crashes within just 3 seconds. If you want to have a look at KXEC or Qubit in action with full screen capture, please visit these links. I hope you find this presentation useful. Thanks for listening.